kind of having a bad hair today, a bad hair day today. Uh, I'm sporting what my wife calls my Dr. Jacoby look. For those of you who remember the wonderful series by oh, David Lynch, Twin Peaks. But I digress. Today, we're going to talk more about using ACT techniques, using acceptance and commitment processes to respond skillfully to anxiety. To this point, we've covered diffusion or disentangling from thoughts, willingness or making room, expanding around uncomfortable sensations, and along the way, we kind of touched on present moment processes as well. Today, we're going to jump across the hexagon to values, for those of you familiar with the ACT hexagon model. For those who aren't, doesn't matter. So values are what you, as Kelly Wilson sometimes says, what you really, 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 really want, uh, quoting some pop star. So this is what, what you, in your heart of hearts, really care most about. And it's probably not anxiety reduction. I get at this by asking people, what do you want to write about when you're 90 years old? that your life was about. And probably what floats to the top as the top three bullet points probably doesn't include, well, uh, I stopped my anxiety. I probably wouldn't make the, st the top three. And if we think about it, the things that come right up to the top are usually about family, about achievements or uh, meaningful deeds, meaningful occupation, friends, sometimes art, music, or religion, they don't have to do with things like not having anxiety, which actually a corpse will always do better than you at not having anxiety. But to be a living person is required to have relationships and love and work and play and all that good stuff. So in that spirit, let's talk a little bit about using values clarification as a skill set to respond more skillfully to anxiety at the risk of speaking redundantly. So this is a little trickier, but let me approach this, continue approaching this kind of from the side. I like to ask my clients, I had two kids, my wife, and I have two kids. And do you suppose that my decision and following through with my, our decision to have two kids overall lowered my anxiety or raised my overall anxiety? Most people thinking, reflecting for a moment, would probably say it raised my overall anxiety, and indeed it did, but it also greatly increased the meaningfulness, the substantiality of my life. Now, I also opened a business called Portland Mindfulness, where I see psychotherapy clients and give classes and make videos and stuff like that. It's my business, I don't have an employer, um, and do you suppose that opening my own business raised or lowered my anxiety overall? Well, most people would say, thinking about it for a moment, probably your, your baseline anxiety went up. And that's true, too. And so did the meaningfulness of my life, the substantiality, the juiciness, the interestingness, the fun in my life also went up. See what I'm getting at here? That anxiety is not just, just like that. It has to do with taking risks. It is a natural human response to taking risks. And it turns out that just about everything we can perceive as a risk. Why? Let's not get into that. You can watch my relational frame theories uh, series on why. But because of the laws of physics and psychology, that's the way it is doesn't matter why. What happens is when we live life, we perceive things as risks and we perceive them as threats to some degree. And now here's where we're going with this. When I'm anxious, sometimes what helps me is to ask myself, 
might this anxiety, if, if, if this apple is the anxiety, might I be willing to have this and hold it lightly using mindful acceptance, present moment, so forth, skills, might I be willing to have it if this was the ticket, if this was just the cost of getting what I really, 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 really want, and if, if what I really, 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 really want is represented by this mug, and this is the life I want, this is the juicy, tasty stuff, having children, having a marriage, having a business, having friends, having a uh, recreational life, having uh, um, an exercise life, and so forth. All of that actually generates anxiety. So is this worth having if it comes with this? And is this good enough to make it worth my while to put up with this, to make room for this? That's really the fundamental question that ACT asks. One version of that question is, are you willing to have, granted this is an arbitrary symbol, but that's okay, are you willing to have this poison apple, if you will, or yucky apple, if it comes with this kind of wonderfully meaningful, juicy, mm, oh yeah, that's interesting, that's fun, that's meaningful. And if so, what's the problem? You, 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 oh, you, you, is this recording? Oh, yeah, it is. Hey, see, there's the anxiety. You pays your money, it takes your chances, they used to say in New York. New York. So it's not so much of a technique, per se. It's, a, it's an evaluation. In a sense, it's almost a cost-benefit analysis. And very, very central. In some ways, the most quintessentially act question one can ask about anxiety is maybe, maybe it's okay, maybe, maybe it's worth having. Maybe it's just the cost of having a meaningful life. And, and noticing that again and again and posing that question of oneself again and again. Could this be worth it? If not, well, maybe we need to clarify what we do really, 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 really want. And that's sometimes what happens in therapy is we go in and we don't really know what, you know, another question that I ask is, what if I made, waved a magic wand and the anxiety completely disappeared? Now, what, your, what would your life be about? What would your goals be in life? What would you want to be involved in? What would still be meaningful if the anxiety vanished? Sometimes people are very forthcoming. Oh, I know what I would do. And then we perceive, we know what, what, what's important to them. And sometimes people say, oh, hadn't thought about that. Oh, good. Because now we're not barking up the wrong tree of trying to kill anxiety. We're, we're looking up a work more workable tree, mixing metaphors, of what are some things that might be worth it to you? And if, if we, we don't know that, we might want to stay there and, and, and dig a little more of what really makes my life worth living and, and of value to me. Let's take it to there today, and we'll finish this series up. We'll mop up the remaining processes, mainly self as context, in the next video.